1999 Safari Trek I have for sale. Um, I'm going to walk around in the exterior and show you um, all the good and the bad that uh, is on the rig. Uh, overall, it's in really good shape uh, for its age. The reason I'm selling it is I am moving out of state. I don't want to bring it with me and store it in the hot sun of Arizona. Uh, this rig grew up here in California. I am the second owner. And when I bought it, I think I had 37,000 miles on it. It now has 39,000. I didn't put very much uh, um, mileage on this thing. Uh, I had intended to travel a lot more, it didn't work out that way. Uh, when I bought it, I did a lot of mechanical improvements to it and I'll, I'll show you all those as well. Um, I, uh, when I first bought it, I put all new tires on it. I put new coach batteries, and I also put a new chassis battery. Uh, the chassis of this rig is a, uh, it's a Chevy P30 chassis. It's got the um, 454, 7.4 liter V8 motor in it, gas motor, and um, automatic transmission, of course. And uh, um, let me walk around and show you what we got here. Uh, at the top, I don't know if the video is going to show this. The clear coat is coming off at the very top of the rig. So let me see if I can zoom in. Doesn't really show great. It doesn't show up that much because the paint underneath is still there and in good shape. I think you can see it there a bit. And um, this vehicle was stored by the previous owner. It was my neighbor and the passenger side here was exposed uh, to the west, so it got a lot of sun. So there is some clear coat coming off on that side. The other side is flawless. So the front here, there is some clear coat coming off uh, in between the windshields. A little bit there. Uh, there's a little bit coming off around the bottom of the windshields. A little bit of checking of the paint, but not, not horrible at all. Um, the front is, uh, is great. Nothing's coming off of this or the bumper. Bumpers faded a little bit to black right there, but not that noticeable. Um, there is a chip in the windshield. This was here when I bought it. I bought a kit uh, that you inject the resin into to prevent it from cracking, which it hasn't. This is exactly what it looked like when I bought it two years ago. Okay, um, coming around the passenger side, uh, up at the top, the top cap you see there is the fiberglass roof material. The paint is fading on that, uh, on this side. The other side isn't as noticeable. Um, there is, this paint's all great here. There is a little clear coat coming off, uh, starting right about here on the door. You can see it, this is the cargo door. Um, the entry door, this is where most of the clear coat, you can see that's coming off there. And <clears throat> to the left of the window, I don't know if that shows up. There's a little bit coming off of there. A little back here at this cargo door. Um, not bad. It's not that noticeable. And uh, up at the top on the rear cap, I don't know how well that shows. Um, there, there is some clear coat there coming off as well. And you can't really see. Oh, over here you can see some too up at the top, but again, it's not, you know, it doesn't jump out at you. The rear of the coach is, um, is great. There's no clear coat coming off at all. It's in great shape. And the passenger side is, or I'm sorry, driver side is flawless. The paint is, is basically perfect. There is no, nothing coming off. Um, the cap up there again, the fiberglass cap, 
paint's faded a little. On this side, it's not, you don't really notice it unless you're in direct sunlight. But the, uh, the sides are in great shape. The windows are, are uh, they're all double pane windows. They're insulated. Some of the seals have failed, so there is some fogging of the windows. They're not super bad. You can still see through them. From the outside, you can't really tell. From the inside, you'll be able to see better. Uh, what I did do when I bought the rig is um, these two front windows that don't open the fixed windows, those had some haze in it. And if the sun was shining just right, it was hard to see out the, to the mirror. So when I was in Arizona, so I drove down there after I bought this rig. I had this, uh, the passenger and the driver's, these front side windows replaced um, with laminated glass. So that's like your windshield. So there is no air gap. There's no seal to fail. And um, you can see perfect out of these now. Uh, that, was, uh, that was the first thing I did. Also, I replaced um, all the tires when I bought it. They're two years old, um, and they have about 2,000 miles on them. And I replaced all six. The windows that were on it, I mean, the windows, the d tires that were on this rig were actually in really great shape, but they were, I think, uh, eight or nine years old, and I just didn't want to take a chance with them, so I replaced uh, all those. I've done some suspension uh, modifications. I'll go over that later when I uh, uh, crawl under the rig and show you the undercarriage. I basically put in uh, some better springs, uh, airbags, a uh, bigger um, sway bar, and uh, some steering arms that were that are that are really good. Uh, made the made the motorhome much more stable and a lot nicer to drive. It was too spongy before, and now it's now it's really nice. Um, the awning, and I'll pull that down later. Um, that's in, it's in really good shape for its age. Uh, it's got some spots on it, but it's not torn or anything. Everything works great on that. Okay, this one is um, all the, the bays, uh, the cargo bays and the propane tank and the generator door to show you all that. Um, I forgot to mention, this is the model 2830. I don't know what those numbers mean, the 28, it's not 28 feet, it's actually, I measured it from bumper to bumper, it's 25 feet, 10 inches. Um, this coach is really maneuverable because of the size. Um, and I show you on the inside, the reason they were able to make these short and still have a lot of space is the bed lowers from the ceiling. That saves you 10 feet off the back of the rig. Um, this is the propane tank. I think it's 25 gallons. It's huge. It lasts a long time. Um, it's, it's great to have. This is uh, the one cargo bay. Um, it does go through in this section here. So if you have a ladder or anything else long that you want to put through there, <clears throat> it's handy for that. And this is the rear on the passenger side. That's one of the water tanks. It's got two 40-gallon fresh water tanks. Um, it's got a 40-gallon gray water and a 40-gallon black water. The black you can't see. Well, actually, you can see the bottom of it right there on the left. It's in the middle of the coach. Um, as we go around the other side... There's the gray tank. I've got a hose stored above it. Um, this is the other freshwater tank. Here's all the controls for the water. Uh, you can basically shut off every section that the water goes to. It's pretty handy. Uh, there's the TV cable hookup. So when you're in a uh, RV park, it also has a phone hookup if, if you had a landline. There's the door for the um, water heater. There is the door for the refrigerator controls. And you have two bays here. Well, it's one big bay, actually. Um, that's the inverter. It's a 1500 watt inverter. The cable that comes, the cord that comes with this thing, um, is for a 50 amp circuit. Um, the yellow adapter there is for a 30 amp. You don't really need more than 30 amps, even running the air conditioning and, and the um, 
the uh, microwave. Uh, if you added a second air conditioner, you would, but it's nice that you have this heavy cord if you ever want to do an upgrade, but uh, not really necessary. But the, this bay is large. There's a lot of room in there. It's nice. Uh, this is the uh, Onan Microlight 4000 generator. It has 34 hours on it only. Um, the previous owner barely used it. I never used it. I was always in RV parks. And I just didn't have a need for it. Um, this is the chassis battery. It's two years old. It's an interstate battery I bought through Napa. And, uh, and I'll show you later the two coach batteries. I also replaced those with brand new um, top of the line Napa batteries. And uh, I was very careful about keeping those charged up. They were never discharged more than, than half. So the, uh, they are in great shape. On the roof. And um, you can see the, uh, the seams here. These are the seams that were, that were here when I bought the rig. Um, I recoded them. And I can show you the product that I used. I just redid these and over here I actually removed this uh, material that was on here before because it was it was too thick and it was coming up in places so it wasn't leaking but I didn't want it to uh, take a chance so I took it up this is Eternabon um, yeah Eternabon tape this stuff is amazing it sticks really good and uh, so I just did it up to this point because the rest of it was in great shape. Um, I did touch up the corners with uh, paint. I had paint made to match. And you can see how much everything's faded, you know, uh, up here. That was the original color. Um, but I didn't want, um, you could see, you know, the white tape from down below, but with a touch up paint, I did that on all four corners. Um, I, it, it covers it up pretty well. And uh, that's the skylight for the bathroom. That's the uh, vent for the bathroom. This is the kitchen vent. And the air conditioning. Uh, the unit, when I bought it, had a little crack right here. Um, and then uh, a buddy of mine patched it. But the rest of the cover's in good shape. That's for the refrigerator uh, vent. And uh, again, I resealed anything that looked like it was starting to wear. This is the uh, solar cell for the trickle charge for the battery. Uh, the, the output is diminished greatly because it's old. Um, you can buy replacements, and I would get a bare one. Uh, they're cheap. Um, that's the antenna. And uh, the front here, so this, uh, the original sealant that was, that was here, and it's kind of bright. The original sealant here was really bad. I mean, it was, it was so thick. They just, every year, kept piling stuff on. I decided just to tear it all off. It was hard to get off, but I did. And then this is a wide uh, piece of Eternabon tape. This stuff is incredibly sticky. And... Uh, you can see, and even though it has some wrinkles, uh, it still seals. It's really hard to get this stuff perfectly flat. But again, I uh, painted the corners so that from below you don't really see a big white streak here. Uh, the fiberglass itself, these panels, it's it's in good shape. It's it's um, right here, it's bubbling a little bit. I don't know if you can even see that. Um, but it's not, it doesn't affect anything. It's just right in this area. The rest of it is perfect, it's perfectly flat. But uh, it's all sealed. I've never had a leak, um, even before I did these seams. I just wanted to make sure that uh, everything was good to go and uh, wasn't going to be a problem for somebody later on down the road. Okay, I'm going to open the hood, show you a few things. You can't really see much, but <clears throat> I basically wanted to uh, just explain what I did in here. Um, all the wires here, that's the battery isolator. Um, every connection that I could reach, I disconnected and cleaned all those contacts. Um, I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any kind of electrical issues down the road. Also, under the, the coach, uh, all the big 
uh, 12 volt cables they go from the coach batteries over to the inverter and then also to the back of the rig in the trunk back there is the hydraulic pump for the levelers so all the connections there were several underneath uh, I disconnected everything clean those up real good grease those connections and uh, seal them back up again just I didn't uh, everything worked on the rig I just wanted to make sure there were no issues also I replaced all the rubber hoses for the radiator the the large hoses all the heater hoses uh, all the rubber again I wanted to make sure I didn't have any issues um, with that show you the back hatch here there is some storage here not a ton but uh, it is useful actually and it goes back this way quite a bit on this side I apologize for the Sun here hope you can see uh, that is the pump for the levelers for the coach levelers uh, it's easy to access so if it needs servicing that's uh, easy to get to. Okay, we're underneath the rig here. I just wanted to show you some improvements that were made. Um, these blue parts, this is a company called Super Steer. This is a bell crank and a crank arm. Uh, you see the spring in the back with the red airbag and uh, these bushings here. Um, this was a uh, for the sway bar. This is a new sway bar too. It's one and five eighths inch diameter. This made a huge difference. Uh, the, the vehicle doesn't lean near as much. It's just much more enjoyable to drive uh, with all these improvements. And um, on this side, you see the other bell crank there that attaches to the steering box. But this made a world of difference. Um, let me go to the back. In the back of the rig, um, I installed a track bar. So it's basically a bar that goes from the, um, the frame to the axle housing and it adds quite a bit of stability, especially in, in crosswinds. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it. It's way in the back. There's the bracket that goes to the frame and then the other, uh, can't really see it. Uh, anyway, um, I can show you. Oh, there it is. That's, uh, that's the mounting bracket for the axle. So again, especially in crosswinds, it it stops the axle from moving and, um, and it makes the, the vehicle more stable. Also, this is the stock rear sway bar. However, I replaced the bushings with much stiffer um, polyurethane bushings. And uh, all the shocks are new, or they were changed when the tires were changed, so they're two years old. and have very little mileage on it. Um, it's the batteries. Uh, you can't really see too much under here. It's too dark, but there's no rust. This was a California vehicle, so everything is clean under here. And um, it's more to be seen. So, new rubber treads new carpet on the sides uh, under here is where the coach batteries uh, are located and again these are were replaced two years ago so they're in great shape let's start the front of the rig um, up here is I have a TV sitting in there right now. This originally had a 19 inch tube TV, which was also the backup camera. It was black and white. It was not very good at all. So I removed that. There's actually a lot of storage in here. Some people put a door on this and will mount a small TV on the outside. I was going to do that if I kept this coach. Um, I'll show you the storage in here. 
it's pretty deep. So you can put blankets, comforter, uh, all the bedding in there is an easy thing. Um, you have three bins up here. A lot of storage. There's the TV antenna. There's a switch on there to switch between cable and the rooftop antenna. The uh, You have shades. There's two shades uh, on the sides and two in the front. Uh, these are very handy when you're driving and the sun gets slow. Those work great. Um, on the front here, I recently replaced these two fans. The old ones weren't working too well, so these are brand new. They're two-speed fans. And uh, I also replaced the defroster vents. Those are new. Also these front uh, heat and air conditioning vents. Those are all new. There are two in the dash. Those were in good shape, so I left those. Uh, I can see if I can show you the mileage here. I don't know if that comes out very good. 39,084. All your control switches, the switch panel down below there, that's the hydraulic levelers. I did put this backup camera in. This is brand new. Well, two years ago. Also has sound. I, I don't know why I never used that. There's no need for it, I don't think. But, um, but that's really good. Maybe you can. Um, well, this window you can. This is the fogginess I was telling you about with the double pane window failures. So all the windows have this a little bit, except for the two windows I mentioned where you're looking at the side mirrors. That is now laminated glass. Those are crystal clear. Is original. It's in good shape, very good shape. I, uh, I shampooed all that. The driver's seat is power. Uh, all the controls, except for the seat back, is, uh, are powered. The passenger seat is manual. You have an electrical outlet down below that map holder there, and there's also one under the dash for charging phones and that kind of thing. You have a reading light up there and there. Uh, there's speakers in the ceiling here. This one, the grill kept falling off. I have the, the grill cover. Uh, there must be a clip broken in there, but kept falling on my head, so I took it out. Oh, the one thing here, this is the uh, crank for the antenna on the roof. I was adjusting that and lubing it, making sure it worked right, and the handle broke off. That just happened yesterday. So um, I'm going to see if I can get a replacement. That's, those are easy to come by. Our lights under the bed here. All the lights work. This couch is original. This also folds into a bed. And there is, excuse me, there's storage underneath it. So that folds flat. And uh, there's a panel that comes off the front. And there's a lot of storage. Uh, the whole underneath is storage. There's also wiring under there for an amplifier for the for the radio that uh, I took out it uh, wasn't working it had a lot of well it just failed so but all the wiring's there so if you wanted to add one back in you can do that and it also has a hookup for a subwoofer and that, that is the new radio that I put in also when I when I bought this two years ago Control panel. So you have your hot water heater switch. That's your generator. I think you can see that. I think I said it had 34 hours. It actually has 35 hours. And uh, that's the monitor for all your your levels. Your water tank, your black and gray tank. These are the switches. Light outside your step. Uh, you can turn the step on and off so it's not constantly opening when you or you know going back and forth when you open and close the door. And then uh, interior lights here, which are this one and the one up front. Good size fridge. Uh, it works great. Uh, you can see there is yellowing on the door just due to age, but everything works fine. 
And this is a dual, this is propane and electrical uh, power source. All the cabinets, these are all plywood cabinets, no particle board. They're still in great shape. Everything works perfectly on them. The finish is, is still really good. Uh, fiberglass countertop. Um, this is also in perfect shape except for just one little nick here, a little chip, but just cosmetic. Stove. Got a hood with a light and a fan. Uh, this is a microwave and convection oven. And all that works fantastic. The sink originally had carpet in the bottom, so I removed that and I put a rubber mat, a lot easier to clean. The corner cabinet, you have a lot of storage in here. Down below this access panel, there is, that's the water heater. It has a six gallon water heater, propane heater. Works great. Uh, this table here, this table pulls out and there are two leaves you can put in. I have two more wooden chairs. They're folding wooden chairs. They're not in the coach right now, but I do have those. Uh, this extends out so it can seat four. This platform here drops down to cover the stairs. More storage. Here's the closet. It's a good sized closet. And down below here, um, turn the light on. Down below here is uh, more storage. Those are the two leaves for the table. Counter and sink. Uh, down below here you have uh, their storage under the sink and uh, you also have the electrical panel that's for the 120 volt circuit. And on this side is the panel for the 12 volt fuses for different lights and things. More storage under here. And you have quite a bit of storage here can't really see down there but underneath here uh, that goes pretty deep I stored uh, travel suitcases in there it's got a lot of storage here's the shower everything's in good there uh, the bathroom fan I just replaced the fan blade and the cover which was yellowing all that works fine Got more storage up here. Two reading lights. Um, let's see. There's a propane detector down there. Got a new smoke alarm. There's your carbon monoxide detector, air conditioning unit, all works great, and uh, the furnace works fantastic. I replaced the, uh, the blower is underneath the refrigerator. The motor was making noise, so I replaced that motor about a year ago with a brand new one, so it, uh, it works, works just fine now. Like with all the blinds drawn in the down position.
bed. Obviously no mattress in here right now. I took that out. Um, it's a queen size. <clears throat> These are the headboards. And I had a memory foam uh, four in, or five inch mattress in this. It's originally came with a four inch. You can put a five or even a six. Um, five inch just sticks up a little bit. This bed automatically shuts off when it hits the high point. If you had a thicker mattress, you could still do that. You just stop short of the ceiling, um, but it would give you a little less headroom to walk underneath it. But the uh, five inch mattress works great. I found one on Amazon, a really nice one with a 25 year warranty. I think I paid $150 for it and it, it fit perfect in here. So any, any queen size mattress that isn't too thick would work great, just great. Vinyl plank flooring right after I bought the coach. It used to have carpet in here, which is just a nightmare to keep clean. So I put this in. It's uh, fully waterproof, very durable. And where the floor meets the cabinets in the kitchen and in the bathroom, I silicone sealed all of that. So that's underneath the trim there. So if you spill anything, it's not going to go underneath the floor. Well, I think that's it. Uh, I'm sure I missed some things. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.